Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Now in this one I'm trying to play a deep screw shot. So I've got the red on the green spot here and I'm trying to pop the red and generate maximum screw back on the white. So we're going to have a look at the shot. So that's the shot I'm playing. And now we're going to have a look at my action and I'm going to talk through some of the key things to think about when you're playing those shots. Right, so the first really important thing to note when you're playing these shots is that, first of all, I'm going to stand up behind the shot like this and make a plan. So this is the time here, if I just play the video, I'm chalking my cue and I'm thinking, OK, I'm playing a deep screw shot, I know what I'm doing, that's what I'm playing on the green. And you will be deciding here on power and the shot that you're playing and where you would like to position the cue ball. All of those things should be done while I'm standing up in this standing position looking at the line of the shot. So I want to do that here. And then once I get down to the table, my sole focus is then on potting the ball at the correct speed. That's the only things I'm thinking about. I'm trying to forget what the white is doing. I'm trying to pot the ball at the correct speed. So that's the first really big thing. So then when I've decided, you can see these little swipes I do of the cue. So let's just have a look here. So you can see that once I'm finished chalking my cue there, so I put my chalk away. And then these swipes I'm doing, these are literally important because... I'm just telling myself to be very relaxed when I play the shot. So they are actually serving a purpose. I'm doing it because I'm saying, right, no tension, keep everything nice and relaxed and make sure I don't squeeze the cue or tense the shoulders. You don't want any tension in your body, especially on a deep screw shot here. Now, something very important to notice here is listen to my breathing as I go down into the shot here. So you can hear there that as I've gone in, down into the shot, you can hear me breathe half of the air out of my lungs again. I'm doing that deliberately because it's just getting rid of any tension um, that's going to build up in the body. So it actually is important. I see some players where when they're about to play the shot, so as they're sliding in here, they've got the opposite effect. That As they're going in, they go... <gasps> And they almost hold their breath with the anticipation of playing the shot and it introduces a lot of tension into the body. So if you can get this habit of saying to yourself, right, as I get down, a nice breathe out of half of the air, you're then nice and relaxed when you're in this position and you're down onto the shot. Now, as I've talked in other videos, I won't go in massive detail because I've talked about this a lot, but as soon as I start to walk in here, I'm very quickly, so my cue is probably already almost pointed on the line of the shot now i've got my v's already formed of my bridge hand there and my grip is already around the cube exactly where i want it to be so even at this point now the the v and the the uh, grip hand at the back is online and that's helping to get the cue online so the cue is going online very quickly now you see the cue is sliding along my hand and i'm going to my hand has hit the table so my hand has just hit the table about here and then I'm sliding forward from that point and down into my address position. And you can see that as I first got down, I didn't start my feathers until I was right down into this position. So you can see here my cue arm is nice and vertical at the back. I'm trying to keep the cue nice and flat. Obviously, I'm playing a screw shot here, so you've got to have some degree of elevation of the cue, but you try and keep it as flat as you possibly can. And it's not until I'm in this position that, so once I get into that position, so if I play it in half speed, once I get into that position, I'll then start my feathers once I'm nice and happy. So I'll do my feathers. And you can actually see that, and this is a really important thing that I teach all the time in my one-to-one -one sessions. When I have finished doing my feathers, I stop at the cue ball. So the feathers will happen. Let's do it in half speed. So I'll do the feathers. And the feathers get smaller for me as I'm going in. And then when I'm happy, I pause at the white and then do my backswing. So that little pause at the white almost signifies that, okay, I've done my practice feathers. I've got everything right. Everything feels good. The aiming feels good. I'm aiming at the correct point on the white. I'm aiming at the correct point on the red. And then once I'm happy, I do that little pause. And then, so I pause there. Then my backswing happens right the way back and then apply the shot. So that front pause is the one that all professionals will have in common. They'll do the practice swings. Imagine just like a golfer when they're practicing, ready to chip onto the green. We're doing it in snooker as snooker players. You practice, stop at the white, then you're doing your cue action. So that's a really important tip I'm always giving to people. 
Now, the reason I'm doing my feathers is because I'm getting a feel for the shot. So when I'm down in this position and I'm bringing the cue backwards and forwards like this, I'm getting a feel for how hard I need to hit the shot so that I'll generate that maximum screw. That's why you do those feathers. Then as I've talked about before, obviously I'm generating a lot of speed now. So look at the final backswing. So the cue comes all the way back. So it's gone right the way back to the V. The cue has been pulled all the way back to here nicely. And then that gives me a nice amount of time and distance to smoothly get the cue up to speed. So when I start to deliver my cue, I want it to build up speed smoothly. So let's have a look at it in half speed. We'll see it go through. And then that generates all that spin on the white. So a couple of key things to note here. So let's have a look. So let's see how still my head stays on this shot. So let's mark it. Yep, so we've marked that there. And then let's also see... Um, so we're looking at the, the head movement, um, and then we're looking at how much follow-through we've got on the cue ball. So let's have a look. So we'll mark it there like that. So let's play the shot. So you can see there that even though I'm playing a very high-powered shot, once I'm back here, there's a little bit of movement there. That's, that's common. You'd see that in a lot of players where the, the arm almost moves up like this before they're playing a screw shot. But then after that point, I'm completely still, and the only thing moving is the arm right the way through. The head is still. And that's very, very important, especially on these screw shots here when you're trying to generate lots of power. And then you can see, so look, let's look at the front here. So let's have a look at my follow through. You can see I've come through and look at the distance that the Q tip has gone past where the white was. Lovely follow through length there. And that's how I generate all the spin on the ball by really pushing the white ball along the table. And that's what really gets the, the white spinning. Um, one last thing to look at here, so my head stayed incredibly still, let's watch my bridge hand. So as the cue is delivered, let's focus purely on the bridge. So watch the bridge hand, see the way the bridge hand did not move at all. The cue bounced off the bridge hand, and I'll talk about that in a second, but the bridge itself was absolutely stable and did not move. So why is the, the cue bouncing up off the bridge hand? Well. When you're trying to generate this maximum screw, we're all told to, you know, you've got to keep the cue in really neat and you don't want the cue coming up in the air. On this shot, I've got to accelerate the cue and I've got to get it up to a very fast speed so that I can generate that spin on the white ball. So it's very important here that I let the cue go right the way through so that at the point when the, white contact, uh, when the cue contacts the white, so right at the point when my tip is hitting the white and I'm pushing through, I want my cue to be travelling at its absolute fastest. So right when it hits this point here, I want the cue to be travelling through and at its fastest. And so by letting the cue go, so I'll pull the cue right the way back, and then when I accelerate the cue, so I've got this acceleration, and then I'll push right the way through, I'll just get a natural bit of the cue just bouncing as, as the cue naturally comes to a, a rest as my hand hits my chest here. So... You know, you can't always try to look like a robot and be too perfect. You've got to have some natural feel in your game as well. So as my grip hand hits my chest, which we'll see there, you've just got that natural bit of bouncing happening at the front of the cue. One last thing that I want to talk about in this video. Look how even though I'm generating maximum power, I'm really trying to um, get that cue ball moving. I don't want too much tension in my grip here. So I don't want to feel like all of a sudden, I've talked about this before, that you're suddenly really tightening this grip here. So when I come back, I try and keep it nice and relaxed. And then when I go through, you can see that the cue has moved to the back of my hand here. This front finger has relaxed. And that's helped the cue to stay very, very flat along the table after I've delivered. So it hasn't gone up in the air or uh, digging down. So the cue stayed very flat. And I've done that by moving the cue to the to the back of my hand, relaxing this index finger. So if we now 
turn off the slow motion, let's have a look. Let's just rewind the shot and we'll go from the beginning again. So you chalk in your cue, you make up your absolute mind, okay? I'm playing a maximum screw shot here. I want to get some nice zip on the cue ball. Then you go nice and relaxed. You're breathing out the excess air so that you're nice and relaxed down on the shot. Pause at the cue ball to say your practice is done. Right the way through the shot to make sure you get the spin on. And that's how you keep the spin on the ball, keep your action nice and neat, and generate a maximum deep screw shot like that. So, as I always say, I really hope you found this video useful. Remember that if anyone's interested in any personal one-to-one -one training sessions, I'm working on this table helping players to improve their game all the time. So if you look in the description, you'll find my website, my contact details. Feel free to get in touch and I'd love to help you with your game. As always, if you did enjoy the video, remember to give it a like. If you're new to the channel and you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. That just really helps me to keep all this content coming. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.